When it comes to the Super Mario games, there's one type that always makes a lot of people excited. The 3D titles. While these aren't necessarily the best selling, they always become a cult classic because all of them are so unique. And today I want to talk about a fan favorite, Super Mario Galaxy. A Super Mario title that takes place in space. And it also experimented with a lot of new concepts. Like worlds consisting of smaller planets that you have to travel between. And weird gravity mechanics. But... There were also a lot of things that Nintendo left out of the game for one reason or another, like completely new attacks for Mario, and even entire planets and worlds that we never saw. So what did we miss out on? What did Nintendo remove before release? And why? Well, let's find out. Number 5 for years now, Bowser has been known for creating all kinds of hellish scenarios that are meant to take out Mario. And one way he loves to do this is by using obstacles and all kinds of traps, which we also saw in Super Mario Galaxy. However, there was another type of hazard like this that was supposed to be in the game, and it even works flawlessly. They could have just dropped it in all kinds of levels and Nintendo would be done. Now I'm talking about this thing. It's some sort of shiny bomb with Bowser's emblem on it. That's very similar to a landmine. And as you can see here, it is actually fully functional. If you step on it, the landmine will flash red and make a sound similar to a real life explosive that's arming itself. And then shortly after that, it will just explode. However, it isn't over after that because it will actually regenerate again. So clearly a field filled with these would be hell to deal with. But interestingly enough, you can also use star bits to trigger them, which is certainly an interesting mechanic that isn't really used in the game. Now in the end, we don't really know why they weren't used. The only thing I could come up with is that something like the bob dispenser replaced them, even though those are a bit different and are mostly similar in terms of design. But it's the only thing I could come up with. And the next one on our list is even more mysterious. Number 4 Alright, it's time to take a look at our first scrapped level of the game. As you can imagine, Nintendo had a lot of ideas for levels, but some didn't make the cut. This is something we see a lot to be honest, from games like The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker, to even the most recent Super Mario title. Now this place is just called Planet Disc, and it was going to be part of a much bigger world that most of you actually know about. It has its own clouds and sun. And aside from that, on the planet itself, you can find a few things that don't look right for a Super Mario game. It had a flower patch on the top side with some mushrooms, some platforms, weird looking trees, and even some sort of pond. However, all of it looks fairly odd and not really fitting for a Super Mario game. You can see this especially well when looking at the mushrooms. They look weird, man. Now it seems like this planet was originally gonna be part of a scrap level called Starman Fortress, which is one of the most popular ones out there. And you can actually see it in the background of the concept art in the upper right corner. Overall, it's certainly an odd one, but believe me, it gets even worse. Number three. Now, when I wrote the script for this video, I wanted to make sure that I covered a lot of different things that seemed really odd to me and weren't that well known. And so, instead of talking about another planet or enemy, I want to look at something bigger. A full-on boss that we never got in the game. He was called the Iceman, and he's clearly a very scary looking guy made of ice and snow. And surprisingly enough, he actually has animations such as Angry Demo and Death Demo, indicating that he was possibly some kind of boss. Aside from that, he also has animations for throwing ice chunks, which are named Iceman Ice. So we at least understand how he would try to defeat you. And the most interesting thing about him is his name, because he's labeled in the Japanese name field as this. Now I can't pronounce this, but it means plant for deletion. And in the end, the ice chunk was repurposed for Baron Brr, who replaced the Iceman as the actual ice boss. And you can even see remnants of this in the game because Baron Brr also shoots some sort of ice balls at you. Personally, I quite like the design of this so-called Iceman. He kind of reminds me of the Eno enemy from Majora's Mask, 
but more mean looking. Number 2 Alright, now the other planet I covered in this video was weird, but there wasn't a lot to see or do on it. However, the next one we are going to look at is one of the most famous ones out there. But it is a lot more interesting than the last one, and people have actually some sort of remastered it. I'm talking about Home Planet, a strange little place where star-covered eggs come out of the ground, and we can find some sort of gates with bells on them. This place was once used in the E3 demo, and official screenshots that were released to the public. However, it was removed in the final version, but its model can still be found within the game's file system. With a copy under world map home, and low poly versions of this planet exist as well, under the names Home Planet Low and Astro Dome Demo Home Planet. An Astro Dome refers to the Comet Observatory, so maybe this was an early version of what we got in the game. To be honest, there's a good chance they did pick up this idea again for the sequel, because in that one you have some sort of planet base, and as you can see in the footage, fans recreated the demo world for others to play and check out. Now in the end, this was nothing more than a stepping stone for the player when starting the demo. They would move on from here quite quickly to what looks like an early version of Good Egg Galaxy. However, now we just have one thing left, and this one is the coolest out of all of them in my opinion. Number 1 I know a lot of Super Mario fans love all the power-ups seen in the Super Mario titles, and as time went on they experimented more and more with this. And in Super Mario Odyssey we saw the latest form of this when Mario was able to become a lot of different things. However in Super Mario Galaxy power-ups were a bit of a rare thing. We only got 7 of them and they were only used in specific levels or settings. But shockingly enough one of the power-ups in the game was gonna have another ability. But in the end, it was cut. You would have been able to attack using the powers of Ice Mario, and it is actually fully functional as well. He has an attack that freezes Octumbas, which goes unused as Ice Flowers never appear anywhere near those enemies. Upon spin attacking an Octumba as Ice Mario, it will turn into an otherwise unused Ice Box object. And this object behaves identically to the Spinning Box object that appears in Gold Leaf Galaxy's first mission. However, sometimes the attack causes Mario to clip through the ground, so clearly it was still a bit buggy. However, it is actually in the game, as you can see from the footage right here, and it works for the most part. Personally, I think this looks pretty fun actually, and I bet Nintendo could have used this for some interesting stuff, but in the end, we got none of it. However, this wasn't the case with Super Mario Galaxy for the Nintendo DS which I also covered in a video, so be sure to check it out by clicking in the upper right corner or on the screen right now. I hope you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe, click the bell button, leave a like, and tell me in the comments what you want to see next, give me some cool suggestions, either about secrets, hoaxes, easter eggs, beta stuff, or cut content, let me know down below.